Well, I'd like to uh, say a few more words about edge states and their role in understanding the uh, quantized flow effect. You've already seen uh, how uh, for a system of non-interacting non electrons in the absence of impurities in a strong magnetic field, you can get a quantized Hall effect with the exact quantization of the uh, Hall conductance. Uh, what the edge states help us to do is to, to see, understand in a way somewhat complementary to Lofman's argument, why the uh, quantization can remain exact even in the presence of impurities and electron, electron interactions. In order to see this, let me uh, bring your attention to this figure that I have posted over here. This is supposed to represent a two-dimensional electron gas in a, an annular Corpino geometry. Uh, this is the two-dimensional electron gas. It is bounded by these two edges, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I've divided the ring into two parts. You can see in this part, uh, the white region is supposed to be a region where there are no impurities and the electron-electron interaction is turned off. So this is an ideal system and we already know what will happen if the Fermi level is in between two lambda levels. There are no, uh, uh, there are no states in the bulk at the uh, Fermi level. The system is in a quantized Hall state. But there are, uh, uh, there will be of course states at the Fermi level along the edges. These will be the chiral edge states which propagate in uh, the direction of the arrows, to the opposite directions at opposite uh, edges. Now, in this region here, I'm assuming that we have some impurities, and perhaps also have turned on some electron-electron interaction, and we know that if we introduce impurities, uh, that can easily produce states at the Fermi level. But, uh, uh, but these states will be tied to the impurities, and if the number of impurities is not too large, these states will be localized about the individual impurities with the localization length of the order of the magnetic length. And if the distance from the inner and outer between the inner and outer edges of the samples is very large compared to this localization length, it is very difficult or impossible for an electron at low temperatures, zero temperature and low voltages, to get across uh, from one edge to the other. This region is basically insulating. Uh, okay, and that is uh, uh, an important factor. Uh, the other factor is that the there will, uh, well, there are no, there are only localized states at the Fermi level in the bulk. There still have to be extended states around the edges, to, to, uh, as we shall see, in order to carry uh, current. Okay, so now we can imagine what happens if we add uh, a bunch of electrons in this inner edge here, the, at, at this point here, uh, and, and ask what happens. It will, of course, these electrons will propagate uh, in the direction of the arrow around the edge until they get to the, this uh, shaded area where uh, they have to still continue because uh, the current has to be conserved and they will keep going around and around uh, uh, but they will stay on this edge because they can't tunnel from the inner edge to the outer edge at, at low temperatures. So eventually they will reach some kind of thermal equilibrium state uh, where uh, the uh, we can define a chemical potential, or more precisely, an electrochemical potential, uh, which has to be a constant all the way around this edge, uh, and uh, 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 can be different from the electrochemical potential defined on the outer edge. If we connect a voltmeter between the inside edge and the outside edge, the, a voltmeter, an ideal voltmeter, uh, will uh, uh, exactly measure this difference in electrochemical potentials. Uh, and uh, if it draws no current, then uh, this can continue forever. If it draws a small amount of current, we can add a battery to maintain that current and keep these two edges at different voltages uh, 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 independent of time. Now, we can ask what happens to the current. We know that in this region, which is an uh, ideal quantized Hall conductor, there will be a current, a net current flowing in, in say, in this direction, uh, which will be equal to the voltage times the quantized Hall conductance. What happens when this current gets to this edge? Well, if we this part of the sample, if we if we're in equilibrium and then we're in a steady state, we know that charge has to be conserved. So therefore, the current cannot have any divergence, and the current must be the same everywhere around this loop. Well, we also know that the voltage 
uh, we reach equilibrium, so the voltage is, is constant on this edge and this edge. The voltage difference between these two points is the same as the voltage difference between these two points, and the current is the same, so the current is still related to the voltage difference by precisely the same ratio, uh, the, namely the quantized flow conductance in the region where we have impurities as in the region where we don't have impurities. Now there's something else I would like to add, though, uh, about uh, the, uh, uh, the role of electron-electron interactions, which is sometimes ignored. Uh, it, in this region where we have electron-electron interactions, it is no longer true that the current is entirely carried by the edge states. If you have electron-electron interactions and we have a different, uh, a, a, a different charge density on the two edges, there will in general be an electric field pointing from, say, the outer edge to the inner edge, and that electric field can drive a fault current in the bulk uh, in, uh, in, in, in this system, uh, it, 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 even though the states at the Fermi surface are completely localized, we know that there'll have to be states below the Fermi surface, below the Fermi energy, uh, in the middle of the lambda levels, which are delocalized and can extend around the sample. And, uh, and it's perfectly allowed for an electric field to produce a current flowing around these edge states, uh, the, these, sorry, flowing around these states below the Fermi surface, uh, that we cannot have a, uh, electric, we cannot have a current flowing parallel to the electric field in the state below the Fermi surface, because that would violate essentially charge and electric uh, and uh, charge conservation uh, and, uh, and current uh, uh, charge and, and energy conservation. But we uh, but we can have this, we can have something we can't have current flowing parallel to the electric field. We can have current flowing perpendicular to the electric field, and that's what happens. So in the case where there are electric electric interactions, the current is not confined to the edge, but the total current flowing around here or in this region has to be still conserved and has to be the same, so, the, so we still have a quantized flow conductance. One other thing I'd like to just mention is that the, um, uh, this argument that I've given for the integer quantum ball effect uh, in terms of edge states can actually be very easily adapted to the, 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 the situation where you have a fractional quantized flow effect. So if we have a region here where there are electron electron interactions with no impurities, and I have an ideal system with a fractional quantized flow effect, say, at quantized flow conductance one third, and if this region has a certain amount of disorder, but I don't introduce any states at the Fermi surface which can cross from, from, from one edge to the other, then it's still true that current must be conserved, and I will have a, 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 a whole current in this region, which is exactly given by the same quantized 12, uh, a fractional quantized 12 conductance that we have in this region.